What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for checking in. In this video, we're going to go over SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF, and we're also going to cover some other notable names on the market, such as Tesla, Apple, Amazon, AMD, and NVIDIA. We're going to talk about these charts on macro and micro levels, that way you know what levels to watch for the week ahead. But before we get into our charts, let's talk about some things that are happening this week that could potentially send us higher or pull us back from the all-time highs. So on the economic front, there were multiple Fed members who spoke last week and remained adamant about their outlook on interest rate cuts. Remember, the foundation of this market rally since last year has been investor hopes of rate cuts in 2024, but members of the Fed stated that they will rely on developing data to make any adjustments. So there are a few pieces of important data this week, but the most notable are going to be the US GDP data and the PCE index. So the PCE index measures inflation. This is a index that the Federal Reserve watches very closely. It has been on a cooling trend, which is also helping fuel the market rally. And with that being said, we want to see that cooling trend continue. We have up until November of 2023. So this week we're gonna get December's numbers and we want to see inflation continue cooling down for the market to be happy and for the Federal Reserve to potentially cut rates in their coming meetings. Apart from the PCE report, we have the GDP. Uh, this is gonna be the preliminary Q4 estimate, so how we did in Q4. Uh, so far, Q2 and Q3 were very strong in 2023, and we want that trend to continue going into Q4 because the fourth quarter tends to be the strongest quarter of the year. And so now that we have covered the economic front, some other main things that are happening this week are going to be earnings. So we do have earnings from companies like Tesla, Netflix, IBM, Intel, many stocks are reporting earnings. We are going into the thick of earnings season right now. And last week, actually, uh, what drove semiconductors, specifically stocks like NVIDIA and AMD, were earnings from Taiwan Semiconductor. So this uh, is a semiconductor company, and you can see that they reported strong earnings and they gapped up phenomen phenomenally on their earnings. And with that being said, that helped boost other stocks like NVIDIA and AMD to all-time highs. And so now that we have covered all the economic front, all the earnings, let's go ahead and talk about some charts. For SPY in specific, we're gonna talk about it on the daily candles where we can see that SPY last week gapped up into all-time highs and it continued running all day on very strong volume. We will make note that the RSI does look a little weak, which suggests that there could be a negative divergence. However, as long as we're above 480 or 479, we will remain very bullish on SPY. Here are some levels to watch. If you are bullish on SPY, obviously, as we said, you needed to stay above 479. And that's just simply because this was around the all-time high mark. Uh, and now that we broke it, we don't want to see it dip back below. But even if it does dip back below because of some profit taking or just a normal healthy pullback, we are very bullish as long as SPY closes above 474.90 or remains above that level. Now, if it breaks below that level, that would be a stronger pullback than anticipated. And it, we do have some levels to focus on after. But notice, and if you've watched our videos before, we always have a red section down here. But this time we created an orange section only because even if it pulls back to 469 or even if it pulls back to 464, we will still remain bullish because of the overall momentum that the market has. The only time we will switch our bias or maybe switch our outlook on SPY right now is if it breaks below 464.60. At that point, then we would turn a little bearish. But as long as SPY is generally within these levels right here, then we are bullish. But the fact that it broke out last week and it broke out on such strong volume likely means that we will continue running and SPY will likely touch 500 at some point. However, just remember that this week we're going into the thick of earnings and we will continue having very important earnings data coming over the next few weeks, which is going to strongly influence the market. And we will be, of course, updating you guys. So make sure you're checking back into our videos. That way we're giving you updated levels. Now, the next stock on our watches is going to be Tesla. Tesla has been one of the stocks that's actually lagged far behind the market rally, surprisingly to everyone. Everybody has been trying to catch a rally on Tesla, but it has just not given it. And that just goes to show how important it is to uh, avoid betting against the trend. Obviously, Tesla is, a, is in a very strong downtrend. And so if you want to play upside, look at stocks that are going into the upside. Don't focus on stocks that are coming down like Tesla. But for Tesla in specific, let's go ahead and talk about some levels to focus on coming into this week. Remember, they are reporting earnings this week. 
So that's going to be a very, very big catalyst to which direction they go. So for Tesla in specific, you have a resistance at 219.20. If it breaks above that resistance, then we do see it moving towards 225. However, this is assuming that this happens before or after earnings. We will not be taking an earnings position on Tesla. If you are taking an earnings position on Tesla, I just want you to pay attention to one thing and one thing only, which is going to be the implied volatility on calls, especially if you are taking same week contracts. If you are taking same week contracts on Tesla, you're going to see that implied volatility will begin to start rising going into earnings. So this will likely move up to about 90 to 100 percent and which is going to translate to about a $15 move. So as is implied volatility is about 77 percent. So the market expects about a $15 move from Tesla. Whether that's up or down, we don't really know. But if that move does not happen, then most of these option contracts are going to be crushed down to zero unless they're very deep in the money. So just keep that in mind if you are taking contracts on Tesla. The market is expecting at least a $15 move. If no $15 move happens, then Tesla's option contracts will get crushed immediately. Next stock on our watches is going to be Apple. Apple, to our surprise, actually rallied last week thanks to a few upgrades and some developments on its watch. Although there is still a ban on selling the watch with the, um, with the issues that they're having with the patent, uh, Apple still rallied, of course. People still love Apple. It's a great company and it's a great stock. So with that being said, we are still not within our bullish range for Apple. Remember, if you've caught our video from the last few weeks, you know that Apple needed to be above 192 for us to actually be bullish on it. And Lo and behold, it actually closed just below 192 last week. So that means Apple is going to need to break above 192 and hold that level for us to go long or buy calls. And our next price target is going to be around 195 to 196. Above that, the price target is closer to 200. To the downside, Apple it has two supports at 188.50 and 185.50. If it breaks below 185.50, it'll probably fill this gap down towards 182, but we wouldn't take an overnight short or put position unless Apple closes below 180.30. If it does move below that level and projects to close below it, then we would consider swinging puts for a price target of around 173 to 174. The next stock on our watches is a stock that has also kind of lagged behind. Uh, and I mean that because if you look at the overall chart on Amazon, you can still see that it's far from its all time highs. But I wouldn't count this one out. If you look at Meta, it wasn't far from its all time highs not too long ago. And you can see that it quickly made that move within just a matter of seven to eight weeks. Uh, so AMD, also same thing. NVIDIA, same thing. So Amazon is lagging behind, which could be an opportunity. On the daily chart, Amazon is looking very strong, very bullish. However, it still needs to get through some barriers for buyers to buy it up. First barrier is going to be 158.60. It needs to break out above that level in order for it to continue its rally. If it breaks above 158.60, then our price target on Amazon is going to be close to 162. So above 158.60, we expect Amazon to move to around 162. So that will be our next resistance if you are watching this stock. Uh, to the downside, Amazon will remain bullish as long as it's above 149.85 but it may consolidate here for weeks before it breaks out which is why if you are swinging calls make sure you're giving yourself at least two to three weeks the longer the better to the downside amazon can uh can turn bearish if it breaks below 147.40 so obviously bears or uh, buyers will need to defend that level if it comes down to it if it breaks below it then it can get very ugly very quickly and move down to 142. next stock on our watches is going to be amd which saw all-time highs last week. This was a phenomenal move. Uh, we actually entered AMD as a group down here around 100. We exited around 150, so seeing it rally, uh, it gives us a little bit of FOMO, but it's completely fine. Um, it's just one of those things. AMD is still part of our long-term outlook, uh, and it's still one of the best stocks uh, out there in terms of uh, outlook into 2024. So for AMD in specific, you can see that the overall chart had a very strong breakout above 150 last week, and it continued rallying. In our video last week on Sunday, we did say that AMD would make a very good full week hold. So I hope some of you guys listened to that because the stock moved from about 150 to 176 in just a matter of a week, which is a phenomenal move. So let's talk about AMD on the shorter term charts. And many of you out there are probably noticing that many of these stocks are trading in very strong or very overbought uh, RSI levels. But 
uh, don't let that alarm you. Just because a, an RSI is overbought, it doesn't mean the stock is going to pull back anytime soon. It can continue rallying for the weeks to come. Exactly how Nvidia has been rallying. I mean, Nvidia has been overbought. Some can argue for about maybe two weeks now, and it continues moving up. So don't go betting against a very strong upside momentum just because you think the stock is overbought in the short term. AMD, very strong upside bullish volume. Uh, next resistance is going to be 176.26, which is its all-time highs. Above that level, it is a blue sky breakout, or that's what they call it on the market when there's no resistance in the way. And so it's a little difficult to give you guys a exact price target to focus on. I would just say make sure you're focusing on the momentum. And one good way to play it is if you can potentially just watch the 10, 20, and the 50-day moving averages on the hourly chart. You can probably hang on to AMD as long as it's holding one of these levels and you can choose whether you want to use the 10, the 20 or the 50 day moving averages depending on your risk tolerance. For example, if you got into AMD right here right around 164, you can have a stop loss if it breaks below the 50 day moving average or if you got into AMD maybe right here at 176 or 171, you can have a stop loss if it breaks below the 20 day moving average or the 50 day moving average depending on your risk tolerance. Uh, the next stock and final stock on our watches is going to be NVIDIA. NVIDIA on the daily chart, you can see also saw all-time highs last week thanks to strong earnings from Taiwan Semiconductor. Uh, NVIDIA is likely going to continue going up for the rest of 2024. We actually see this stock going to 1,000. Uh, it will take time. It won't happen overnight, so just keep that in mind. But for now, let's focus on what we can focus on, which is the short term. For NVIDIA, all-time highs is around 596.50. Obviously, if it breaks above that level, that's again a blue sky breakout. It will break above or at least try to break above 600. We do see that happening this week. Whether it holds above 600 on the very first attempt, that could be questionable. We actually expect it to fail, maybe come back down, shake out some people around 561, and then reverse back up for continuation. It's very unlikely that we're going to see a repeat of last week this week, especially the fact that we had such a strong rally over the last few weeks and many names could use some consolidation. It doesn't mean that they will reverse. It doesn't mean that they will pull, uh, pull back and break all supports. It just means that they will consolidate, uh, which means that they can just move sideways over the next few weeks before continuing their rally higher. Uh, so if you are focused on NVIDIA, we are still very strongly bullish above 561. In fact, we are very strongly bullish on NVIDIA as long as it holds this breakout. You can see there was a one-time rejection, a two-time rejection, and a three-time rejection right around 505, which means that NVIDIA, as long as it holds that level, is going to be bullish. So it may very well pull back, retest 505, and then bounce back. And that's completely normal. We actually prefer to see that because if it does that, it reinforces the breakout and it shows that buyers are willing to defend 505 and continue buying it up. And so that wraps up our video. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and like.